While the food aggregators like Zomato and Swiggy have been disrupting how the food is moved, there has been another disruption going on in the background that has redefined how the food is being made. I am referring to the rapidly moving food tech industry. It is likely that you tried the biryani from Beros and told yourself that you should visit the restaurant sometime and eat over there. If that is the case, it might surprise you that Beros comes from a restaurant that doesn't exist. This concept is known by several names like ghost kitchen, dark kitchen, virtual kitchen or more commonly cloud kitchens. This idea extends beyond where the food is made. It actually transforms how food is designed and brought to you through data and artificial intelligence. Hi, I am Praveen and in this video, I am going to explain how technology is enabling what we eat. A typical restaurant has two sections. The kitchen, open only for employees, has infrastructure to store and cook food. The food then goes to the dining area that seats customers. When a restaurant starts accepting delivery orders, some bottlenecks are created. The kitchen might not be capable of meeting the order volumes. There is no dedicated pickup area. The staff are not dedicated to one particular line. The waiting time shoots up for both delivery as well as dining. And worse, the dining customers don't get to choose the dish they would want because restaurants expect them to pick the one that doesn't take much effort. This causes the customer experience to go down. As the delivery orders increase, a restaurant might move towards a delivery-only model that is optimized in space and location because a smaller size and a location that is not necessarily a hotspot would do the job. That is what the cloud kitchens do. In simplest words, cloud kitchens are merely commercial cooking spaces without dining options. They serve as catering hubs for online pickups. There are two models of cloud kitchens commonly available. In the first model, the kitchen space is operated by a restaurant and they use the space for producing different cuisines under different brands in one place. In the second model, a food tech partner provides kitchen as a service by offering cooking space in a large setup. Individual partners rent a part of this space by paying a membership fee that covers everything from rent, infrastructure, commercial equipment and added services like dishwash and storage. Consider Rebel Foods, one of the largest cloud kitchen spaces in India. They built a bouquet of restaurant brands spanning multiple cuisines operated from the same kitchen. As they grew and started scaling, they developed a command over the entire supply chain. This has formed a whole ecosystem of food. New restaurants could simply buy this plug-and-play kind of service and get started quickly. Even Wendy's, the third largest burger maker in the world, has gone this way by partnering with Rebel Foods. Rebel Foods compare themselves to Amazon Web Services and Slack, which are classic examples of how an internally developed platform became a game changer when opened up for the larger ecosystem. The most fascinating aspect of the high-tech transformation of food is the way they are mapping the customer's eating habits. Firstly, food is unlike any other consumer good. At any point in your life, you are a customer for either luxury products or economy products. The movement between these could happen at different points in time, but they could never happen within a week, month or even a year. This is true for nearly all consumer products. Food is very different in that way. You could move between these two ends in a short span of time. One day you could be ordering a barbecue nation box and another day you could be ordering only a dosa. Also, food is the socially consumed product and depends on the decision to eat with family, friends or alone. We also look for expertise when we order. We would prefer ordering pizzas from Domino's instead of a restaurant that has everything on the menu from roti to pastas. If we visualize this on a chart, we could see the various needs of the same customer at different points in time, primarily dictated by the two variables, social setup and diet value he is looking for. Restaurants in their conventional form have tried building an umbrella of brands to address these needs. M Brands owns Pizza Hut, Taco Bell and KFC. But there is no synergy between them and they operate as separate companies with separate infrastructure. A food tech company would however make the best out of this by building various delivery only brands targeting these needs on top of the same infrastructure. Simply put, one cloud kitchen equals multiple restaurants. All this is possible because the cloud kitchens are tech based and they use data to shape their business. To begin with, these new age kitchens have deeper integration with food aggregators like Swiggy. These food aggregators are likely to share data and insights at a granular level which could help them identify the demand patterns in a way that the conventional restaurants might not be able to. 
For instance, this data could tell them there is a demand for momos on Wednesdays and Thursdays, 7 to 9 pm in your neighborhood, but there is no restaurant offering momos there. It wouldn't take these food companies a lot of effort to start selling momos under a new brand name exclusively for this geography and this time slot. You would only assume that a new Momo restaurant opened up in your locality. But the reality is that these Momos might be made in the same kitchen as the biryani that you last ordered. This is only the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other things that data could do to your food tech company. To give you an idea, Ribble Foods is hiring a variety of engineers from tech behemoths like Apple and Amazon to solve the biggest problems in customers' food journey. They draw an analogy to how companies like Uber have disrupted the way people move from A to B. Ribble Foods equates this to the food aggregators like Swiggy and Zomato that move the foods. However, they see themselves like what Tesla is doing to the cars itself and they have been patenting a lot of innovations. A visual AI-based quality checking machine detects the variations in the prepared dish and accordingly rejects or accepts it for delivery. A robotics-led smart fryer that recognizes the dish being prepared and accordingly adjusts oil temperature etc. which enables them to launch thousands of dishes without having the need to train people. Automated works that dispense ingredients as per the measure for the dish that is being made. The recipes could be loaded over the internet for the works to start making new dishes. QR codes on the product packaging that would let the customer check who cooked the food, the body temperature, the kitchen details, etc. While conventional restaurants lag here, they aren't going to be replaced anytime soon. Restaurants will remain and grow owing to the dining needs of customers. There could also be a spillover of these advanced tech to conventional kitchens. But the differentiating factor is the economies of scale. The food tech companies are built on a network of hub and spoke. They don't have kitchens everywhere. Rather, they have centralized kitchens that make use of AI to predict demand patterns and prepare food in advance that would be sent to spokes which are sometimes mere kiosk where the food is thermalized, plated and packaged for pickup as the order comes in. One way this food tech companies struggle is visibility. Customers draw the need to order or eat out by building the recollection of physical restaurants they've come across. They prefer to order from a restaurant with a well-known brand name, good ratings and reviews. A survey projects that 53% of people prefer ordering food from a restaurant they visited or planned on visiting. The food tech companies need to counter this setback with high marketing spends. They advertise heavily on all mediums. They also need to pay the aggregators to highlight their listing above the rest. Above all, they resort to discounting to drive demand. Now read this in conjunction with the 30 to 40 percentage commission they pay to aggregators. So it is not a wonder that some big companies in this space have been scaling down. Swiggy Access has been shutting down many of its cloud kitchens post-COVID. However, Ribble Foods seem very optimistic about the future. In the last round of funding, they touched a $800 million valuation and are soon speculated to join the coveted $1 billion unicorn club. They are operating at 40% larger volume compared to pre-COVID and have ambitions to expand to markets in Middle East and Southeast Asia soon. They are also focused on an IPO in the next 18 months. As a customer, I am very much fascinated by the possibilities of the future. Every physical object around us is turning smart. What could this mean to the food we eat? Imagine a future where an application predicts your nutritional needs based on your health and the fitness plan. It may understand your eating habits to decide when to order food for you by picking the right ingredients. Now what if it is also embedded in your social setup? Maybe it will read your calendar and decide to order to have the food delivered just in time for the friends you are planning to have over. If your friends are also connected to the system, it will also customize the foods, skipping the foods they might be allergic to. Do you find it creepy or fascinating? Personally, I am quite thrilled by this. If you like this video, please leave a like for me. I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.